What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video on the Lawn Lover channel. Happy to have you back. This morning I realized that even though I applied a preventative fungus treatment about two weeks ago, we now have some fungus issues in the yard. I uh, noticed it last night, checking around this morning on a walkthrough through the yard uh, before I mow today. Um, so we're going to go over the fungus and how I'm going to put on a curative application following the preventative app. Um, we'll go over that and show you how to get rid of fungus in your yard, so stay tuned. So if you can kind of see guys, I noticed this last night walking through the yard. Um, this came up pretty quick. We've had two weeks of rain. Uh, about two inches over the past two weeks so it's been pretty wet pretty humid um, so you can see this is the kind of stuff you're looking for when you're looking at fungus issues so we've had a lot of water a lot of humidity um, I've touched base with the guys at the Purdue extension haven't heard back yet but I I battled this last year a little bit until I figured out what it was it to me it looks like leaf spot um, which is common around this time, and especially with the uh, conditions that we've had. We're in a ripe fungus conditions, but you can see the lesions on the grass blades. Um, so what this does is, in the springtime, you'll get the lesions like this. And there's a good shot of one, and you'll get the little spots. This is why I'm thinking it's leaf spot. You see that little spot there? Um, so you'll get the lesions on your grass blades, and um, if you don't catch it early, so this popped up literally in the last few days, if you don't catch it early, you will um, get to a point where it gets hotter in the summer, and you'll get to the melting out phase um, where it'll just kill your grass. And then the, you'll have to start over and overseed in the, in the fall time. So you really want to catch this early. Like I said, I put down a preventative application two weeks ago of azoxystrobin and propiconazole. So we're going to hit this hard today with a curative application. Um, I typically alternate apps, but today I'm going to put down a propiconazole azoxystrobin because that's that works fantastic on leaf spot. I'm going to put it at the curative rate. The next app I do will be the clearest 336F. So this is why it's important to walk through your yard. I posted a video last week about walking through your yard, saving you money, catching stuff early. This is a prime example of walking around, taking a look at stuff, and catching it early before it decimates your lawn. So, like I said, we're going to hit it with a curative application um, at the curative rates with azoxystrobin, propiconazole. I typically don't like to repeat apps, but that's a good combo for leaf spot, uh, according to the labels, which we'll go over here shortly. I'll, I'll kind of show you how to read the label, how to decide what you're going to put down. Um, and then the next application, I will hit it with the clearest 336F, so we'll have different fungicide groups. Um, so we avoid resistance. It's good to mix the propiconazole azoxystrobin together, uh, also to tank mix them to avoid resistance. If you have questions on that, I'll link it up in the corner uh, to the fungicide video that I they had that explains the groupings and explains alternating stuff to avoid resistance. That would be a great resource for you. But let's go in the garage, let's take a look at the labels, check out what's going on and see what we're gonna put down. And I will say a little word of advice, if you haven't done this before, Go to a website like domyown.com, print off the labels to your products. I keep these in a binder on my workbench because a lot of times the labels on the actual bottles will get crap on them or they'll come off in the way that they make them. They kind of suck um, with that and they're harder to read. So if you keep them on here, you keep them nice, keep them on your workbench or wherever you keep them. Easy to reference back to, easy to read, um, it's just much nicer. So like I said earlier, we're going to go with azoxystrobin and the propiconazole. Now these are professional grade products. This would be the generic of azoxystrobin. As I said in my prior fungicide video, would be the Scott's Disease X that you can buy on Amazon or Home Depot Lowe's. Propiconazole would be the Bayer um, fungus control that comes in a hose and sprayer bottle or granules that you can also get at the big box stores. These are just a little more potent. Um, actually a lot more potent um, as you can if you can see this I don't know if you can see I'll try to get it up here 
you can see that we're at 14.3% of the active ingredient propiconazole. They actually make this, I just found out, in a 41% if you're really having issues. I like to stay away from the more potent products, um, that kind of level, just because I want to avoid resistance uh, of, of my fungicides. I don't want to get resistant because once you get resistant, um, you're screwed. So this is a lot higher concentration of the azoxystrobin as well. Um, I don't remember the exact numbers of the disease X. I want to say it's 0.31% of the azoxy. Um, and this is much higher than that um, per se. So you're going to get a better coverage, more potent application, um, and overall help your fungus issues a lot quicker using these type of products. Bigger upfront cost. But per application cost, as I broke down in my fungicide video that you'll want to watch, I keep talking about, um, you'll see that this is cheaper in the long run. So as you're going through the labels here, everybody, um, it goes over a lot of plants and stuff you can put this on. So the biggest thing that you're going to want to skip to is where it starts talking about diseases. Um, this is mostly plants. So here we go. So you want to skip to where it starts talking about diseases. Now I'm going to be tank mixing, um, but if you see here, I'm pretty certain that I have leaf spot and I've asked some other people about this as well. And that based on the, what I'm seeing in my lawn, um, this is, you know, we've got prime conditions for this this time of year. So you'll find the fungus that you're trying to treat. Now it'll list the use rate per thousand square feet You'll have your first rate, which is your preventative application. So this is what I put down a couple weeks ago, um, and this is the curative app. So this is when you have active fungus conditions or when you're ripe for fungus. I'm going to hit it with the, the curative app because I know I have fungus in the yard at this time, and I want to nip it early and get rid of it. So I'm going to put down 0.77 ounces of product per 1,000 square feet. That equates out to about 1.5 ounces per 2,000 square feet. So I spray in 2,000 square foot sections. Um, and like I said, I put this down 16 days ago. So we're right in the interval. It says you can put it down every 14 to 21 days when conditions are favorable to see. So we're gonna go 1.5 ounces for leaf spot for every 2,000 square feet today on a curative application. So here's the propiconazole label. Pretty similar on layout. Um, I'm gonna go down and find Gray leaf spot, um, so it'll be referenced as a lot of things. Leaf spot and melting out, although they're two different things, they go together. Um, so like I said, you'll get the leaf spot, and if you don't take care of it in the spring, once you get to summer, and I've had this happen before, you'll get the melting out where the grass will just pretty much rot and die, and then you have to thatch and overseed and put in a lot of work and a lot of money in the fall to get your yard looking back to where it is. So this is an easy step in order to nip the fungus and. Um, so I'm going to put down at the curative rate, similar to the exoxy, it gives the preventative first and then the curative. So I'm putting down, as you'll see, these are similar, two ounces for every thousand square feet. So if I'm spraying in a 2000 foot section in my sprayer, I'm going to put four ounces of propiconazole in the sprayer mixed with the 1.5 ounces of azoxystrobin, and we'll agitate that, mix it up. Um, spray it down. Now this says every 14 days, um, so we're over that mark two of my preventative, and we'll put this down. Now one thing to be aware of guys is you can't just start spraying this stuff all over the place. There are annual maximums, so you don't want to just, you know, lace your yard all the time with these products because that's going to lead to resistance um, of the fungus, and then you'll have pretty much impossible time trying to get rid of it. So make sure you're reading the labels. That's the most important step when you're dealing with fungicides is read your labels, use the appropriate PPE. So when I spray fungicides, I use my PPE. I put a respirator mask on because I don't want to inhale it if it's windy. I also put on my rubber boots and I put pants on um, to just make sure I'm not getting any of this stuff on my skin. We want to get it in the grass. Also guys, when you're laying this down, I'm going to use a backpack sprayer, as I said before. You're going to want to be cognizant of what kind of spray tip are you using. So the propiconazole is going to be a foliar spray. It also depends on what kind of fungus you're treating. So since I have leaf spot, this is on the grass tissue. I'm going with a foliar, foliar spray, which means 
you want to get the spray on the grass blades. Now you can either do a soil drench spray, which means you want to get the fungicide down into the soil to soak through the roots, or you want to do foliar, which means it's going to soak through the grass blades and work its way down to eradicate the fungus. So, and when I put down fungicides, if you can see this, I like to use the T-Jet air induction tip. Now I know I've referenced this before, but what this is going to do is it's going to give you a wider spray. Um, it's going to decrease the size of the droplets. So instead of straight foliar, it'll spread it better. I just like the way it spreads with the fungicides and then it will get some of the azoxy and product down on the soil, but a lot of it will fan out um, over the actual grass blades. And it's not necessary, but when I do foliar spray with fungicides, I do like to use a little bit of surfactant. So what the surfactant does, it's going to help it stick to the grass blades. So we want to get it to stick on there, eradicate, kill that leaf spot, and get the healthy grass back. So now that we know what we're spraying, um, I do like to write it down, if you can see this. So I always write down what I'm tank mixing. So when I get out there to mix it up, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm putting in. I don't forget. I don't mess up. Helpful, helpful tip is to write down what you're going to put in your tank before you even go out there to start mixing. So let's go outside. Let's start mixing this stuff up. Get the fungicide down on the grass. Kill this fungus and get the grass looking good again. All right, guys. So now we're outside. I recommend when you're ever spraying stuff um, out of a sprayer, fill up your sprayer, especially if you're adding surfactant, because this stuff will start foaming and then you'll just have a hell of a time trying to get it uh, down to where you can spray it. Uh, I got my list here, so um, helpful to have a little measuring cup. Now this bottle of Azoxy does have a little measuring cup. It's kind of a pain in the butt to use, so I don't like to use it, so I just cut the other side and I measure it out into the measuring cup. So we're gonna do the Azoxy. Propiconazole, we'll add a little surfactant, finish mixing it, we'll agitate it, and then we'll get to spray in. Now I've told you guys before about the little agitator tool I use. Just get a cordless drill. Um, this is actually a paint stirrer, but it works great in the sprayer. Just make sure you know where your parts are at and get to mixing. You wanna get a good mix on this so all your product's gonna be evenly applied when you start spraying. your lid on and we're good to go kill the fungus. Right, guys so the fungicide's down uh, at the curative rate looking good uh, hopefully I caught it early enough we'll do updates here so stay tuned hit that subscribe button give me a thumbs up turn on notifications so that you'll see future videos when I update you on how this fungicide treatment went but like I said guys moral of the story is walk your lawn often look for little spots before they become big problems correct them quickly you'll save yourself time and money down the road so I'll see you next time out in the lawn.